What unsupervised childhood activities did you participate in that probably should have killed you? Previous owner of my childhood home left a bunch of random chemicals in the garage. He was into home improvement and stuff, and my siblings tool to playing mad scientist. Several instances of unknown gases spreading through the garage later and we're still around. My co-worker was given a chemistry kit as a kid. Back in the day when things like mercury weren't uncommon. He finished up all the guided experiments and then decided to start making random combinations of stuff. One day he mixed some stuff and it exploded. In his bedroom. Room was covered floor to ceiling in brown smelly goop. Fire. Lots of fire. I almost burned down the house in Mexico when I was like 8. I set a fake plant on fire and ran away. Mom was cooking next door and put the flames out. In the U. S I burned a hole in the carpets in my room when I was in middle school. Covered that up with small pink carpet. Parents never found out until I moved out. I used to rollerblade off the roof and onto the trampoline. It hurts to think about it now. I'm still shocked I never got hurt. My backyard was lower than my front yard. So the back deck was 8 feet or so above the backyard. We would jump off onto the trampoline. Lawn darts. Except no one was throwing em at the rings. Nope toss em straight up in the sky and scatter. I did something similar in college. But with a compound bow I used for hunting. Shot it straight into the sky and about 8 of us took off running. It took a solid 15 to 20 seconds after firing for the arrow to come back down. Driving itself pretty deep into the ground. Those were a pretty terrifying exciting 15 seconds. Needless to say. If somebody had gotten hit by that. There's a solid chance they'd be dead. Climbing trees way too high. When I was a kid. We used to toss apples under the tree. Climb the tree. And when the horses that my grandparents raised would come to eat the apples we would leap on the horses most of the time the horse would buck and take off running with a kid on its back my buddies and i restored an old tree house on the outskirts of town that was a good 30 feet in the air we had to rebuild the ladder to get to the platform and then used a rope to pull up materials we had a three-tiered house by the time we were finished fun but dangerous my brother got our ball stuck in a tree and we had to put a ladder in the tree to get to the top. I told my brother I would pay him $5 to do it and I never did. He held that over my head for years and I finally paid him back when he graduated high school. My mom found out at my wedding during his speech about this and was not happy. Growing up in a family that hunted it wasn't uncommon to find. 22 bullets in the garage or in hunting bags. My brother would take bullets that he found, place them on a log, and then smash them with a hammer. Luckily he outgrew that phase. I hate to be a one-upper, but we would do something similar with 22 and shotgun shells. We were preteens, owners of Red Rider BB guns, and unsupervised rounds of ammunition. We would get bored at plinking cans, birds, and squirrels. So we lined up shotgun shells and... 22 rounds and shot them with our BB guns. We would routinely have to dodge the 22 casings shooting back at us after we hit the primer. Looking back on it, I'm really surprised none of us were seriously injured. We used to dig tunnels through the hay that they stored in the barn that would be like 10 meters high in places. The tunnels would regularly collapse and we'd just shrug it off and dig another. R.I.P. to the folks that engaged in these activities. But never made it to this thread. Yes. I feel like both my parents generation, boomers, and grandparents generations, silent and greatest. Depending on the grandparent, knew a lot of kids when they were growing up who died in childhood due to accidents. I feel like every older person can name a few classmates from their youth who never made it to adulthood. Lots of falls from high places and lots of accidental drownings in particular. Common now. It's, thankfully, unusual enough that an accidental child death is usually huge news in a community. Swimming in the drainage canal by my house. Barbed wire. Horse shit. Concrete. Fertilizer runoff etc. 
I grew up on an Air Force base and back behind the school was an old pond with suspicious rainbow ripples that was surrounded by 50 gallon barrels. We called it the Devil's Claw and spent the entire summer there every year. I looked it up recently and yep. It's a super fun sight because it was a jet fuel dump. The Great Rock Wars. In grade school we played this during recess. We just whipped pebbles at each other. Hard. Also. I pay homage to my fallen 4th grade friend. May we never forget you. I remember this too. Just huge games of hurling rocks at each other. I switched schools in 3rd grade and got in immediate trouble at my first recess when I tried this. I explained that we did it all the time at my old school. Not sure the principal believes me. Oh man I could write a book about it. Growing up in the rust belt and playing in the industrial relics I'm still surprised I'm somehow alive. Plus my buddy's grandpa was a gunsmith so we had black powder. You can imagine what we did with that. Also swimming in the river and fking around by the train tracks. Yeah. I don't know how I even still have all my OEM fingers and toes. Before paintball. We only had BB guns to shoot at one another. Needless to say. There weren't any fancy face masks or other protective gear. 40 years later. My parents were finally told the story of me using a pocket knife to remove the BB embedded in my kid brother's butt cheeks. I used to have free reign in the woods behind the base housing at Fort Bragg. My friends and I would ride our bikes through the woods for hours in the summer at the tender age of 7 like it wasn't a big deal. I'd never let my 7 year old now wander around the woods like that nowadays. One day we found a vine that was dangling next to a ravine and do a Tarzan Juno across it. It was probably a good 30 foot drop to the bottom of a pit filled with jagged rock and dubious puddles of ick. I wasn't supposed to show my parents. But I did one day and they freaked out and cut it down. My friends were mad at me for like a minute until they all agreed it was indeed incredibly dangerous and for the best. Perhaps the most logical conclusion I have ever seen kids come to in my life. I grew up within the boundaries of Tufts University's campus. At the end of my street was a campus building that was 6 stories high. I remember climbing to the top of the fire escape. Stepping over the railing onto the slate pitched roof. I held onto the dormer and made my way on top of that roof. Then I would walk up to the pitch of the roof and straddle the pitch and look out on the Boston skyline. I was under 10 years old. Well over a hundred feet up. One slip and I was sidewalk pizza. I can't believe I survived being a latchkey kid in the 80s. I stepped onto the wrong bus when I was 14 and my family went to Istanbul. Turkey and almost got separated from them. I didn't speak the language or even know where we were going or the name of our hotel due to also being a stupid American and not paying attention. They barely pulled me off in time. Back in the old days when folks didn't lock doors. My dumbass used to go in my neighbors houses and wander about while they slept. Then I'd get scared and leave. Very dangerous as a 6 year old young lady. I had a friend who told me that her hometown had a woman who would do this. She was a special needs case and her family just warned the surrounding blocks that sometimes she would let herself in if you left your doors unlocked. That idea always scared me. As fun as it really was. I am still surprised how more of us didn't get seriously injured killed on old school playground equipment. I'm 29 but I'm old enough to remember when playgrounds were filled with gravel. Not wood chips or shredded rubber. Holy hell. Good thing small kids are shockingly resilient because I know I face planted on those rocks more times than I can count. I'm 20 and we had gravel. They were smooth stones. But still not soft like what I see these days. Actually. The playground equipment at my grade school is gone. Now driving by. It's just a big field. A big asphalt area. Some basketball nets with no nets. And now what appears to be a gaga ball court. Evil Neville lying my BMX bike off jumps into roads while a friend was supposed to be watching for cars but mostly stood there picking his nose looking at his untied shoelace. I didn't do much jumping. But every day in middle school. I'd go down this huge hill on my way home. Not too dangerous in theory. Except there was a curve at the bottom of the hill that I couldn't see around until I was already there. I rarely wore a helmet. 
And my brakes didn't work because my bike was a piece of shti I got for $20 at a garage sale. I fishtailed and skidded out a few times but by some miracle. I never actually crashed into anything. Nothing worse than a few scrapes. In the 50s and 60s you could get chemistry sets complete with a vial of mercury and other dangerous chemicals. Man. It was fun playing with that mercury and mixing various chemicals to see what would happen. Next we'll talk about the wood burning set and the toy that came with a cauldron to melt metal and pour it into molds to make soldiers and whatnot. All while mom was upstairs fixing dinner. I had between 25 and 30 acres of land growing up in two separate states. My parents could have cared less. There goes 8 year old me with sometimes a 22 rifle and sometimes just a stick wandering in the woods for hours alone. Next to the site of a rattlesnake roundup. In South Texas and near Tucson. In summer. Never got bit but did meet coyotes, animal and human. Javelinus. PTSD afflicted Vietnam vets and had all manner of adventures. Some parents seem concerned their kids will have SX when they're teenagers. I'm terrified my kids will go off and do some of the things I used to do with friends and get unlucky and die. There was a train bridge near where I went to school. It went over a ravine with a shallow creek. We would climb underneath it. A small group of us would go camping almost every night during the summer and at least Fridays during the school year. One night we threw a can of spray paint in the fire and the resulting explosion triggered an addiction we didn't know we had. We ended up blowing up at least one can a trip for 5 years. We saved all the ones we could find and had over 500 cans. We would climb trees or a ladder we lashed between two trees that was 15 minus 20 feet high and 10 feet from the fire but never once got injured despite some close calls. Cans exploding immediately right in our faces. Logs being launched out of the pit. Shrapnel from the can and or the ball in the paint would shoot between us while on the ladder. PH and we were drunk most of the time too. It was dumb as hell but we never paid the price for it though so it's one of my favorite high school era memories. And now we're experts in hucking dangerous shti in a fire so we've got that going for us. Setting everything on fire that I could get my hands on. I'm not a pyro. But I went through a phase when I was around 8 or 9 when I just lit shti on fire. Books. Paper bags. Toy cars. Lawn furniture. Legos. The park down the street. Action figures. Sticks and leaves. Etc. It was just for a short time and I grew out of it. But that had real potential for disaster. I had a friend when I was a kid who was a serious pyro. We lived down the street from this big field with a set of railroad tracks that ran through it. One summer he got the bright idea to combine a lighter and a can of hairspray and test it out in this field in late August when it was nice and dry. Only started a little fire. But it quickly started spreading. The friend tried to stomp it out but I was wearing shorts and sandals so I wasn't having any part of that. So ultimately we booked it. The whole field burned down. Dry grass up to our chest for several blocks long. We could see the smoke from our windows. We just knew we were busted. Fortunately the house like 3 blocks down in this field, that we didn't know was there, was saved before the fire got to it. And the news said it was probably a spark from the wheels of a train. So we got away with it. That was my first and last time playing with fire. We used to play with chemicals in my neighbor's garage. Like combine all different kinds of chemicals we could find. I would assume lawn care and car chemicals. In her garage into a hole in the cement floor. At least we were smart or lucky enough to keep the garage door open. My greatest discovery at around 12 years old doing that was finding out brake fluid and chlorine for the pool combust when mixed. Soon my friends and I were doing all kinds of crazy shti with the mixture. The best was driving a pipe into the ground a few feet long. And putting the chlorine and brake fluid in there and watching the dragon fire shoot out the pipe. It's not an immediate reaction. Kind of a slow burn till it bursts into a furious hellfire. I grew up in Kigali. Rwanda. After the 1994 genocide there were landmines all over the place. We used to walk to our primary school, about 1. 5 km. As kids we used to play soccer on the street while walking to school. 
So one day the ball fell in the bush as always. And I went for it. Little did I know that the stone like thing under the ball was a notorious landmine. I got the ball and I asked the other older kid what it was. 10 minutes later the entire neighborhood was on site talking about how I just cheated death. Never will I ever forget it. If I stepped on the mine that afternoon. I wouldn't be writing this today. I used to play around in the houses that were being built in my neighborhood and dumpster dive in their big dumpsters full of rusty nails and other hazardous shit when I was like 7. Fun times. I used to fill balloons with my dad's oxygen acetylene torch from work and throw them in bonfires. The explosions were so thunderous we have cops riding up and down the block. I can remember doing it one time and flaming debris burning a sand dollar sized hole in my starter jacket. Oh and going hunting with my friend at 13 and shooting shotguns at trees that we were standing near when one of us wasn't looking to scare each other. Also almost becoming a vegetable a few times from freshly waxed handrails while skateboarding with no helmets. Road near my house had a dip in it. We'd go down it and pretty much anything with wheels. Usually bikes scooter skateboards but got pretty creative. I got dared to go down in rollerblades once and got my first concussion. We also took down a wagon, a go-kart, and a shopping cart. The road was also used by cars. If one's coming just get in the other lane. If two, throw yourself off the shoulder and hope you don't hit anything important on the drain pipe. One of the favorite places to hang out when I was a teenager was a disused railway bridge on the edge of the town. The land had began to reclaim the top and was all overgrown. Except for a small part in the center. There were amazing views of the town from there. And we used to head up there most summer evenings and relax with some smokes and alcohol. It was fairly well hidden from public and the police. So we used to get up to no good. One dude who was irritating AF used to tag along. As he was the younger brother won one of the girls. He was sat on the one foot wall looking down at the stream below. And this lad grabbed him and dangled him over the edge. Was a pretty big drop down to the rocky stream underneath. Maybe 30 feet. The dickhead let go of the poor lad's hand. So he grabbed the wall of the bridge. Then he let go of his other hand. Again. He clung onto the wall for dear life. Then fell. Luckily. There was no serious damage. Other than his soaked clothes. The lad who dangled him over didn't hang round with us after that. We made sure of it. I grew up in the deep country. We had over 100 acres of rocky hilly land with several creeks. And I had free roam of it from the time I can remember. I wandered several miles in every direction. Climbed trees. Rode horses and dirt bikes. Waded in snake infested water. Got covered in ticks. Stickers. And a few leeches. My cousins and I swam in creeks by splashing away snakes and huge snapping turtles. We swung on vines and climbed up in decrepit old barns. I can't imagine letting my kids have that kind of freedom in this day and age. Most of the time my mother had no idea where I was. I somehow never had many serious injuries. Probably the worst was getting thrown off my horse and landing on my tailbone so hard it knocked me out. Or getting kicked in the head by a cow. Back when my family lived in Panama. My brother and I would play coconut bowling. It was a game we made up where one of us stood atop a hill behind our house and rolled coconuts down the hill. While the other stood at the bottom trying to catch them before they rolled into the gutter. However. These coconuts were pretty hefty and sometimes they'd bounce up in the air a few feet due to their irregular shape and from hitting rocks bumps in the hill. And could have potentially caused us some serious injury if they ever hit us in the head. They never did. But our mom put a stop to it before it did. So thank you mom for not letting us cave in each other's skulls with coconuts. Riding three wheelers. We used to hop on them unsupervised and ride off into the fields and woods. Build ramps. Hang from trees and grab a friend off the back. Roll them on purpose. Stupid shti way before anyone wore any kind of helmet. My brother and I would bend our mattresses in half and then sit on them. Release them and fling ourselves across the room into the wall. We were not bright children but damn did we have fun. We used to play a game in the tunnel that ran under the highway. 
one of us would run down it as fast as we can. Not easy because it was about 5 feet tall and most of us were about that height. While the rest of the group would throw river rocks after them. It resulted in many injuries. Me and some other neighborhood kids would play a game where we would jump into people's backyards. Run around. And then climb back over the fence before we got caught. Now that I'm adult and realize how many of my neighbors were gun owners I realize how dumb that probably was. We had a cottage growing up on the water that was about a mile from an abandoned gypsum plant. To get to the plant you had to walk the beach which was mostly nature and abutted by forest the entire way. So it was a bit of a trek. Our parents didn't seem to care what we were doing so we'd walk to the abandoned factory and play on it. We'd play with all sorts of rusty metal and jump around broken concrete with rebar sticking out while trying to avoid poison ivy. One time I even befriended an injured goose. In retrospect we definitely could have gotten tetanus or god knows what or injured ourselves but we didn't. We never got sick or hurt. It was a type of freedom I admit to being mildly nostalgic for these days. My friend and I got stuck in some quicksand that was the result of the local dam overflowing. Instead of getting out right away. We played in it like pigs in a mud bath. Probably for about an hour. Then it actually took us a bunch of tries when we wanted to get out. We got home. Covered from head to toe in mud and my friend's mom scolded us because apparently there were pockets of air underneath the quicksand. So people every year were sucked down into them and died. Apparently they had to have divers come to look for the bodies and many were never found. Edit. We were about 9 years old. To this day. It is still one of my most fun memories. Grew up at West Point. The cadets would run war games in the woods behind my house during the summer. My friends and I would then go pick up the spent shell casings and clip them back together to make Rambo belts. The problem was often the cadets being 20 year old kids would leave boxes of live rounds laying about. Which we would find and then try to set off with rocks etc. If you got really lucky you would find a law rocket not disabled. They were supposed to smash the tube after firing. Or even a claymore. After a few years they started having assemblies at middle school about the dangers of live munitions and not to go messing with them. Didn't really stop us. The 80s were a different time.